fresh from the Oh, thanks. Thanks, Dave. Well, good morning, everyone. I just saw, uh, oh, dang, you don't have to clap for me. I just work here. It's not a big deal. See me um, We're opening with a hymn this morning, so I thought it'd be better if I, if I sang a couple of hymns. And, um, a lot of times in my own prayer time, I actually have a hymnal by, by like, my Bible and stuff, and I'm praying. And a lot of times I'll just go through the hymnal and, and sing a quick line from a, from a hymn or something like that. Um, and these, these little blue books we have are really amazing. We have a really rich history of people of faith, you know, sharing their testimony and stuff. Um, this next song, you feel free to sing along with me if you know it, uh, is one that I find myself turning to a lot uh, when I'm praying in the morning, and it's What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Um, I think oftentimes when things in life are really rough, for some reason it's not our first reaction to go to God in prayer. Uh, and this hymn is about doing just that. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, Because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Comfort with the Lord of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise for sin? Friends, good morning. good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. Glad to have you with us as we worship God today. A few announcements as always as we begin. A vacation Bible school is still going on this week. It's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the older kids from grades two through six. We divided them up to try to keep the numbers down because our kids are not vaccinated, so we are taking protections for them as well. So again, that's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday this week from two to six. WC4 Music Camp is going on every day this week, so that's grades two through eight. Uh, Janelle's leading that, so if there are people who would like to be involved in WC4 Music Camp, you can still let Janelle know that's every day this week. And then once VBS is done and Music Camp is done, guess what's next, friends? 
the garage sale, exactly, the garage sale. And if you've uh, never seen the garage sale before, you don't know what you are in store for. But guess what? Before I left on vacation, I made sure to have Debbie put up in the Narthex sign-up lists so that people could sign up. And I was just sure that when I came back from vacation and came into the church and looked at those sign-up lists, they'd be full of everybody signing up to help with the garage sale. But guess what? They're not. They're not. It takes, thank you, Clay. That's very helpful. Exactly. So, friends, I, I will call people if I need to, but that's a lot of phone calls. I know we don't have everybody back in church yet, but as you're leaving, please take a look at those and think about where you can help. The very first thing that needs to happen is actually very big. This Saturday, July 3rd at 9 a.m., it takes a lot of people to do this. We have to get down all the bookshelves and stuff like that from storage and set up tables and things like that. We've got to turn the church, basically, into the space for the garage sale. So it usually takes a few hours if we get a big team together. So if you can come at 9 a.m. this Saturday, we need to set that kind of stuff up. And then next Sunday, a week from today, once we're set up for the sale, we can begin receiving donations. So you can bring things to the church with you next Sunday or um, any time after that for the next 10 days, we're going to receive donations from July 4th to 14th. So we've got time to set everything up and organize it. You can help in a different room as we organize everything for the sale and everything. Um, and there are, as I said, there are sign-up sheets out there where you can sign up a different area you'd like to help or time of the sale or something like that. There's also a garage sale meeting this Tuesday night at 7. So for people who are like to be involved in helping us plan stuff out, we're going to have a meet this Tuesday night at 7. So um, it is soon garage sale time, friends, beginning this Saturday at 9. Anybody can come and help it would be greatly appreciated. It takes a lot of work to set up all the tables and bookshelves and things like that. And then we'll start receiving donations so we can start bringing things in as we set up for the sale. A few other announcements then this morning as well. Um, next week, we will be having ushers again and bulletins and passing offering plates as we've done. Um, the CDC, I've, I've double-checked it again since last week. Um, they don't think things are spread by touch, they think there's, the virus has been primarily spread through uh, the air. So, however, we will still be doing communion, though, um, in individual servings. Next Sunday's communion Sunday, we'll still be doing that individually. But I'd like people to take a bulletin home with them as we have information about the garage sale and that kind of stuff. So we'll pack, make those available again next week. And then next Sunday after church, we are doing a picnic. Hot dogs and hamburgers and things are being provided, but we're downscaling things from the big Vacation Bob School Carnival that we've done. Just some activities and things for the kids, providing hamburgers and hot dogs, and you can bring things to have along the side of that. There'll be paper plates and things like that is available as well. And then um, John Sinclair asked me to announce this morning that if you are going to go on the zoo trip, on the bus trip, please see John at the front of the church here at the end of the service today. And there are at least four seats still available on both the zoo trip and the Queen Esther trip. And if you've never been to Sight and Sound Theater, it is a tremendous experience. I'll be on that trip. They do incredible uh, Christian theater productions there. They're wonderful if you'd like to go see that. I think this concludes our announcements, unless my wife is in the room and telling me I'm not done. So there is a microphone. Try to, you were taking it out of my hand at the same time. I think that's a dead battery. The yellow one's there. Sorry about that. Things are a little bit different up here because of VBS, so sorry about that. Good morning. Good morning. We have had a great week. I, I don't want to, Matt already said most of the announcements I had, but I wanted to come up, first of all, he and I haven't talked, obviously. So you don't need to bring anything for the picnic anymore. Just come. We're going to provide it all. So he didn't know that, so I apologize. So just come to the picnic on Sunday. I'm out of the loop. I'm just the pastor. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, also, uh, we had over 30 kids this week, and we have even more signed up for next week. So it's going to be a really great week. Lots of wonderful shepherds and, and teachers and people that have volunteered in many ways. So thank you all for that. And then um, I want to ask, beg, 
if you haven't been teaching Sunday school and you're back in church and you're ready to start doing that, um, just let me know because I'm trying to, I'm going to try and start making a schedule so that I don't have to stand up here every Sunday and beg. Um, I do have enough shepherds and teachers for July, so thank you for that. But um, throughout the months, I know it's been kind of crazy getting back here, but if you're willing and able, or if you haven't done it before and you have some questions and you'd like to, to get involved in that ministry, it's great. Um, I can put a sign-up list out there and I'm sure you'd I'll run to that. So I might do that for next week if I can do that with everything else. So anyway, um, thank you all for all you do. And oh, one more thing. The prayer labyrinth, if you didn't get a chance to do that last week and you would like to do that, I have another one. This is going to be the last Sunday for that Sunday school lesson. A prayer labyrinth, it has been used for thousands of years. People walk through it slowly praying, and there are different stations to kind of draw you in closer to God. And it's just really cool. So if, if, if you haven't done that ever and you'd like to, to experience that moment with God, it is behind, it's between the, the church and the preschool playground in that little parking area there. It's just with chalk. So um, just feel free to do that today. Friends, so again, uh, so Janelle, correcting me, you can just come next Sunday. They're providing everything uh, to make it simple for people to stay next week for the picnic. You're invited to stay afterwards and then head off to your own Fourth of July things that you have. Please stick around with us if you'd like to next Sunday. Are there any other announcements? All right, friends, we're going to begin our time of worship together this morning. I can hear Clay playing our hymn in the background as we begin. Our opening song is Great is Thy Faithfulness as we celebrate God's faithfulness to us always. I invite you to please stand if you are able as we begin our time of worship today with our opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. Pray with me, please. Lord of God, we gather here this morning to thank you for your great faithfulness to us, that you do give us new mercies, new blessings 
every morning, every day, we see your love showered out upon us and your great faithfulness to us. So Lord, give us grateful hearts for all that you've blessed us with in this life. Help us understand how much we have, how truly blessed we are, Lord, so that we can be a blessing to others, so we can share your love with others, so we can give what we've been given to others, so we can give of ourselves as we serve you and the many things that go on in this church and in other places, Lord. There's so many ways we can give back to you for your great faithfulness to us so we can spread your love in this world. May we be so filled with your spirit as we worship you, Lord, that we're ready to do so when we leave this place, that your spirit and love might flow forth from us into this world that needs your love. In your name we pray, amen. Friends, you may be seated. And I'd like to invite the children to come and join for the children's time, please. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. can't read your lips. Yeah. Dave, Dave, can you open those doors over there, please? Thanks. Friends, you want to spread out a little bit? Come over here. with Some people come over here on this side of me. Can a few people come over here? Over here. Guys, can you come over here? Thanks. And spread out a little bit. So friends, I brought a backpack with me today, okay? Well, some people can stay there. Okay. <laughs> All right. I brought a backpack with me today. And, you know, I went on a vacation recently. My family did. We went out to the Grand Canyon and saw a lot of stuff out there. So I brought back a few things from vacation. So um, what I've got here, this is, a, this is a book that Mr. Janelle picked up on the geology of the Grand Canyon, which means, like, studying the different rocks and everything and how old everything is. And these are brochures of all the places that that we visited, not all of them, but some of them, because we visited a lot of places, so see, that's what these are. There's all information about the Pueblo Indians and things that we saw as we looked at the places where they lived, and this is from, this is from the petrified forest where the logs are actually like rocks. They're really cool looking, and I brought back a petrified rock, which is actually a log, but it's like a rock, actually. See that? See, it looks like a log, but it's actually like a rock. And Miss Janelle, who was just, just trying to learn some stuff about the rocks, brought back this. And it's called Vishnu Schist. And it is about 2 billion years old. It's, one of the, it's only found in three places on Earth. It's one of the oldest rocks, this type of rock that we know of on Earth. Um, so it's super old, and she brought that back kind of as a souvenir too. Oh, and, but I'm not done. We went to other places. We saw this place with a giant meteor hit here, and this is another canyon that we were at. And we learned that as we went around the country, we could get um, passports to national parks. When you went through a national park, they would stamp your book. So as you go around the country, you can get um, collections of these. So you see our stamps in the books here as we went to national parks we got them stamped as we went and visited places out west and everything like that. So we got those, and then we got, what else? Oh, it was really hot, and so I needed to have a good water bottle. So I bought a water bottle because I wanted to, be able to have cold water. It was really hot as we were traveling, so I got that. And then, what else? This is another passport book because we all whole family got those. And then this is a souvenir from Route 66. You guys probably won't know what Route 66 is, but there's a song about it and everything, and, and it's kind of cool. So we visited that, I got that as a souvenir, and then I was worried about the sunshine because of my bald head, so I got myself a hat so I'd look like a tourist everywhere I went. How do you like my hat? So I got that too. I didn't have this. I got this for vacation. So these are just some of the things that we got on vacation, okay, that I brought, that we brought home. And there's other stuff like Sam, we got a t-shirt from the Grand Canyon and things like that. But these are some of the things we picked up to bring back and put in scrapbooks and things like that. And I'm showing you this because this morning I'm talking with all the adults about stuff because we got the big garage sale coming up. So I wasn't going on vacation thinking, you know what I'm going to do on this vacation? I'm going to bring stuff home with me. But that's, that's what I did though. We've got some souvenirs and things and some of the other family members got things too. Um, in fact, what I need to do is get rid of things at my house. I've got a lot of stuff at my house, 
But look what I did. This is just stuff I threw in the backpack this morning that I, that I brought back. Now, I probably won't get rid of these because these are pretty cool. This is like 2 billion years old kind of thing, right? So, but some things probably I won't. I'll get some things in scrapbooks. And then what happened just yesterday, I thought, well, I'm going to go to the grocery store yesterday. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what, I'm, what I need to do. I'll show you an example. This is a pool toy. And we've got puppies at home. I think you guys know that. And see what the puppies did to this pool toy. So I'm going to throw this out. And what I got to replace it, though, because I think in my head I shouldn't necessarily have to replace it, but instead of getting a new pool toy, I got these. See, these are for the puppies to chew. Can I add one at my house? You have a puppy? Yeah. And it's, go ahead. My sister, um, just, my uh, puppy just chew it up. The puppies chew things up, huh? So we got these for our puppies to chew. So I'm thinking, well, instead of replacing the pool toy with another pool toy, they're just going to chew. I'll try to get them something to see if they'll chew those instead. Because these puppies are even eating our furniture and stuff. It's getting ridiculous kind of thing, okay? So they chew a lot. And then in the mail yesterday, I got a card um, in memory of Miss Nancy Hoy. It was a thank you note from Bob for making a donation for the Angel Fund. And I took this and I put it on the refrigerator because I thought, well, I don't want to throw this out. I want to hang on to this because that's a great picture of her. And I find myself thinking, I'm still getting more things, right? I go on vacation. I even want a broken pool toy, and I'll throw this out, okay? But I don't think to myself... I'm going to get something else, though, to try to stop them. I'm always, like, getting more things, it feels like. And so what I'm trained to the adults today is, with the garage sale coming up, we need to think about all the things that we have. Because kids in our country generally have a lot of toys and a lot of things. Not everybody, but a lot of people have a lot of things. Do you? Yeah, it's okay to be honest about that. Right? If you've got a lot of things... Yeah, you have lots of stuff. So, so I'm going to try to talk with the adults about thinking about how we could give some things to the garage sale because when we do that, um, we raise money for the church. And also, if we don't just give away things that are junk, we call it a garage sale. We, we call Miss Mary the queen of junk. And we think about things, ah, this is junk. I'm just going to get rid of it. But I'm thinking instead about things that maybe somebody else could actually use that we don't use so much anymore or could do without that we could actually be helping other people and getting rid of some of the things that we have in, in our house and in, in our life. So I'm going to be talking about that this morning because I came home from vacation with a new water bottle and a new hat and all these brochures and these passport books, right? And when I got up these pool toys, I'm trying to think about the dogs destroying things. I think, well, I'm, I'm, instead of the dogs, just I should, maybe I should just feed all my stuff to the dogs and let them destroy it or something. I don't know. Maybe I should do that. But instead, I got them chew toys. So I'm always thinking, though, as I look around, my goodness, we have a lot of stuff, and somehow I just keep getting more stuff. Even when I go on vacation, I come home with more stuff than I left with. So well, I'm going to talk this morning with the adults about stuff, but kids can understand this, too. We've got a lot of stuff, even kids do, and with the garage sale coming up, it's a chance for us to give some of those things to help other people, because maybe there are other kids that don't have all the toys or things that you do, or don't have all the clothes or things that you might be outgrowing or something like that too, okay? So you kids can think about that too as you get rid for, ready for the garage sale, okay? All right, I'm going to take off my hat so we can pray, and let's say a little prayer together, everybody. Dear God, thank you so much, as we just sang, for your great faithfulness to us, which means that you are always giving us what we need, and we can always trust and know that you give us what we need, and we give you thanks for that. But help us to remember, Lord, that there are always, always kids, Lord, or always adults that don't always have everything that they need, Lord, and we can be a blessing to them when we try to help uh, give them things, Lord. So help us to think, even kids, about, uh, Lord, what you can use here at church or how you can use us by giving things to you or giving time to you that you can use us lord to try to help other people in so many different ways help us to be boys and girls who grow up to be thankful for all that we have and ready to give to others or serve to help others however we can in jesus name we pray amen so look guys even when i go on vacation i come back with more stuff than i started with so what i want to try to do is try to give more things to other people. And garage sale is a great way to help do that, okay? All right, thanks, everybody. You can go back to Children's Church. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes,
I have so much stuff, friends, I need just a second here to put it away. It's a time in our service when we share our joys and concerns with one another. Does anyone have a joy to share this morning? So the praise God for today. Yes. And this is your first time back as husband and wife, right? No. I can't believe I just said that about Ben and Taylor. I'm sorry. I don't know why I just said that, Jonathan. <laughs> I left my brain on vacation, I guess, still. Good to have you with us. Other joys today. All right. Praise God. Yes, I hand the back too. Luke said he's going to say something about it next week and share some pictures and stuff with us next week, he told me. But his fire pit project was completed yesterday. All right, friends, I have a few other prayer concerns to share with you as well. Um, first of all, Debbie Messino has a friend named Kelly who's facing cancer surgery, so please keep Kelly in your prayers. Uh, Anthony Carmella is the eight-year-old that uh, a friend of the Ross family, and Susan Danny, said that he had surgery recently to remove a tumor and a kidney, so please keep him in your prayers. And um, we would had our second COVID death to a member of our congregation, um, Gary Sayers, that's Darlene's husband, passed away. Um, like Lee Giesick, it won't actually say COVID on his death certificate. It was pneumonia, technically, that was the cause of death. But uh, Gary passed away. He was in and out of the hospital down in Florida. So they were down there. And I just spoke to Darlene a few days ago, and they're going to have a memorial service in late July. Uh, so please keep Gary Sayers' family, that's Darlene and her family, in your prayers. And then there are others that we'll mention that have been on our prayer request list. Friends, I'm going to invite you to uh, join together in our prayer song this morning as we turn to God in prayer today. Um, our prayer song, as we think about trusting in Christ and not all the things that we have, is in Christ alone. Was 
Friends, would you join with me, please, for a moment of silent prayer as we come to our God together in prayer today. Lord God, we just give you thanks as we gather in this place this morning. As we already have prayed, Lord, we give you thanks for your great faithfulness to us, for the blessings that you give to us every day. We give you thanks especially for the gifts of your Son, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed open heaven doors for us, who sets us an example every day of how we can live and love. We give you thanks for your wondrous grace, for your mercy, for your forgiveness, for your love, for your spirit which fills us and sustains us. Blessings like food to eat and clothes to wear and homes to live in and homes that seem filled with so many things as we've talked about already, Lord. Lord, we have so much to be grateful for, so much to be passionate about, Lord, when we think about you. Lord, may we just be so grateful for all your blessings that we want to give back to you, we want to give to you, we want to serve you. It's summertime, Lord, and our minds are filled with vacations for so many and school being off time that we have with our kids or grandkids or things when they're not in school, for days that are filled with sports and activities and things like that. And we know, Lord, that it's easy to get caught up in all the things in life that are around us that take up our schedules and fill our lives. But Lord, may we remember to make time to have you on our schedule, to be close to you to worship you, to be in your word, to be in prayer, to be in service, to not allow whatever time of year it is, Lord, the things that happen to crowd you out. And Lord, may we not allow all the things that we have either to crowd you out, 
May we not be so concerned with all the things that we have that we forget, Lord, to give back to you in gratitude and service over things that we can give to others. Lord, give us hearts that are grateful so we have hearts that are ready to serve. This morning, Lord, we are grateful that you are able to answer our prayers and you always answer them faithfully. And even when we don't understand, Lord, we know you answer our prayers in a way that's best for us and those we love. So with confidence, Lord, we come to you this morning and we lift up Kelly and Anthony and Eve and Carolyn and Megan, Jean and Pam and Tom and Dave, Jacob and Pascal and Sue and Wyatt, John and Barb and Bob and Nancy, John and Peggy and Pat. Lord, wherever the touch of your healing hand is needed, we pray you'd be upon, it would be upon each person. They would feel you with them in a strong and mighty way. And Lord, we pray for the Sayers family this morning as Gary has passed. Please be with Darlene and the whole family. Give them the comfort and strength of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, if it's possible in any way, may they find in us, Lord, a sense of strength and hope and encouragement that we can lend to them as well. We give you thanks, Lord, that Gary was a person of faith and we can know that he is with you as are so many of the loved ones that we've lost, Lord, during this past trying year when so many people have gone on to be with you. Lord, we give you thanks in knowing that in Christ alone, our hope is found. In Christ alone is salvation. And we know, Lord, that all these people are with you. We give you thanks for all the blessings you've given us, Lord, for how you've blessed our lives, but especially for that in knowing that you've given us Christ and so you've given us everything. We pray all these things together this morning in his name, the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who taught us to pray together saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Don't define my word. I am strong 
Amen. Friends, that's an original song by Clay. They've done it last summer when we were doing our series on the Old Testament, reminding us that uh, it's not our possessions, it's not anything else that gives us our strength. We're strong in God's spirit, and that's what gives us strength. And we're talking about um, that this morning. And I ask you if you would please to take a moment to pray with me and for me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Sometimes I think I should pray a prayer like that before any words come out of my mouth because I know Jonathan and I know Ben, I know the Penman sons, and I looked right at them and think I'm, I mix up my own kids like that too. It, that's not as embarrassing as you do it publicly to other people's kids, you know. Sometimes I think I need to pray a prayer sometimes that says, Lord, whatever I'm about to say, bless what I'm about to say, you know. So uh, I try to do that with my life, but of course you still make slips of the tongue and say dumb things sometimes. I think of my own kids, Gabrielle and Sam, we're going to be starting at a new church next week, helping to lead worship at the Hubbard United Methodist Church. So this is uh, your last chance probably to see them for a while as well. So um, feel free to mix them up if you'd like to, Gabrielle and Samuel too, if you'd like to do that. Friends, I've told you this before, but um, I am a nerd. I'm a nerd, uh, kind of a geek even. Um, and I'm also a Christian, as you know. So one of my favorite books, and then movies then, is called The Lord of the Rings. And the guy's going to put a picture up there for you of the symbol of the, the Lord of the Rings. And um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's kind of a fantasy adventure book, part of a series re really written by J.R.R. Tolkien. Tolkien was a steadfast Christian who inspired other writers, famous Christian writers, even like C.S. Lewis, he wrote the Chronicles of Nar Narnia, Mere Christianity, other things like that. He inspired C.S. Lewis to become a Christian. And in the year 2000, the Christian magazine Christianity Today ranked the book, The Lord of the Rings, among the top 10 Christian books of the 20th century. You might not have known. You might have heard of the books or seen the movies even and not really have known that it's actually a Christian work of literature. Several years ago when the movies came out, the church I was serving then, I did a series on the books, on how they're really Christian books and what all the symbolism means. But I'll just give you a very brief overview of the Lord of the Rings for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about. In the story, Frodo, a hobbit, and the guys have a picture there they'll show you of a hobbit. He's given the ring of power. And whoever is given this ring of power has powers given to him by the ring. However, he ultimately learns, he or she would ultimately learn that he doesn't possess the ring, the ring possesses him. The more one wears the ring and experiences its power, the harder it becomes to part with the ring. And there's a miserable character called Gollum in the story. Gollum was so consumed by his desire for the ring, he's reduced to a shriveled, pathetic creature who had all but lost his humanity. And there's lots of Christianity things just flowing through this. One of the things is called the return of the king, and if you look at the picture of what the king was like, they found the actor who looked most like the traditional picture of Jesus that they could to play the return of the king as they go through all the stuff, all the Christian symbolism and everything that is in the story, the Lord of the Rings. So anyways, in the story, the ring must be destroyed, and so it must be given up, it must be willingly surrendered. In order to give up the ring, you've got to surrender the desire to keep the ring and keep that for yourself, and it's almost impossible to do. But it has to be willingly surrendered to be destroyed. I know some of you have never seen this, so you don't know exactly what I'm talking about. Those of you who've seen it know what I, what I mean, but part of the reason I like these stories so much is because Tolkien was a Christian and was very intensely written as a Christian book He's primarily writing about a great truth about humanity. We strive to possess things. 
we're attracted to. He makes it a beautiful, shiny thing, but really, people are attracted to things in general. People like owning things. Possessing things gives us a sense of power. And like the ring in the story, we have to be willing to surrender that desire, and it isn't easy to do. It's a story about how humans love to possess things, and it's part of what gives rise to selfishness and jealousy and other evil parts of humanity. This book is really a story about how being a Christian is about letting go of the things that we want and try to keep for ourselves. It's really a story about how being a Christian is about self-sacrifice. There's even an episode of the popular TV show, The Big Bang Theory. If you've ever seen The Big Bang Theory, it's about the ring of power. The, 40, the four nerdy characters on the show get a movie replica of the ring, and the episode is very cleverly written about who will get to possess the ring, just like the movie. No one wants to give it up, even if their friendships are destroyed. It's funny. It's cleverly true to the idea of the ring. Things possess us. We do not possess them. And so the love of things has the power to take over our lives. It's especially true here in America. For all the wonderful things about this amazing country, everyone knows how patriotic I am by now. The main part about what drives our capitalist society is consumerism, buying stuff. Children here in the U.S. make up 3% of the world's child population, 3%, but we buy more than 40% of the toys that are purchased globally. It means from the time they are kids, many people in our country have far more than we could possibly need. The self-storage business in America is now a $38 billion a year business, $38 billion. In 2018, the most recent year I could find, that's how much we spent to rent storage units, $38 billion. That's more than three times the $12 billion the NFL made in 2020. Think about that. The income of the storage unit industry is more than three times that of the NFL. Think professional athletes make a lot of money? All the millions made by every player, every player in every, every major American sport combined doesn't approach the money Americans spend on storage units. There are so many storage units in America that the entire population of our country could easily fit inside them. There were 52,000 storage businesses in our country. The 52,000 storage facilities in America outnumber all the McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King's, and Starbucks in America combined. Within those 52,000 storage business industries are over 23 million individual storage rooms, over 23 million, which is why we could all fit inside. And most of the people who rent them, of course, have garages or basements or attics at home already full, as I do at home. I find that mind-blowing, and I love statistics like these, so here's just a few more. There are over 300,000 items in the average American home, 300,000. The average American woman owns 30 outfits, which is big, one for each day of the month. In 1930, that figure was nine. The average American home has more television sets than people. We have more televisions than people to watch them. Americans spend more on shoes and jewelry than on higher education. I, that one spoke to me because I've got kids in college now, you know, the cost of college, a room and board. We spend more on shoes and jewelry than on higher education. That's crazy to me. And here's a stat that made me think of my own wife. The average person will spend 3,680 hours in their life about 153 days of your life, looking for items you've misplaced among all your stuff. <laughs> Most commonly misplaced, phones, keys, sunglasses, and paperwork. You'll spend a lot of your life looking for something you can't find because you have so much stuff, it's been lost among all your stuff. I know my wife does that. I give her a hard time about it all the time. But partially, it's because we have so much stuff. Okay, enough statistics. I won't give you any more, but I'm amazed by statistics like these. It's part of what drives the American economy, though, our need for things. And so we keep buying bigger houses, and even 
rent storage units to keep it all. Of course, some people's lives are actually destroyed by the accumulation of things. I don't just mean people like on the TV show Hoarders, where there's actually something you can tell emotionally or mentally wrong with people. I mean countless people in our country who spend far beyond their means in order to acquire more things because we think somehow things are going to make us happy. And some people's lives are taken over by that. Ironically, we think things will make us happy, but having too many things causes the exact opposite to happen. I read a scientific study that says short term, when we shop for things, the brain releases a chemical called dopamine in the brain, giving us a temporary feeling of euphoria. We're happy to be getting these new things. But long term, having too many things in our homes and having to organize them all and clean them all and keep things neat in our home causes our brain instead to release levels of cortisol, a stress hormone. Having too many things literally makes our brains more stressed, makes our lives more stressful. And the more stressed our lives become, the more our survival instinct kicks in and we want to do something to have a feeling of dopamine and euphoria. And so we go out and we get more things. And so it's like a cycle that repeats itself. And in some cases, it really does destroy lives. Now, obviously, I'm timing this message this morning, preaching this message today because next week, we're going to begin accepting items for the annual garage sale. And yes, I'm hoping we'll have another successful sale by getting people to think about the amount of things we have and parting with some of them. But deeper than that, I also want people to think about how we need to simplify our lives, simplify the stress in our lives by actually getting rid of some of the things that we have. Because we have too much stuff. Stuff doesn't just take up space in our homes, it takes up space in our lives. The more time we spend looking in our closet, thinking about what we're going to wear that day because we have so many choices, that's less time that we could be doing other things and more stress it actually causes. The more time we spend looking for things that we can't locate because we have so much stuff, that's more time that we could be doing something else. The more time we spend cleaning our homes or organizing them because of all the things we have, is less time we have to give to God somehow, or to people we love somehow, or even just to relax with less stress in our lives instead of dealing with that stress. We all know a simpler, less cluttered life is a better life, certainly a less stressful life, and a more spiritual one. Jesus talked a lot about this. You know, over a third of the words that Jesus spoke in the Bible, that Jesus spoke, have to deal with possessions and things. Here's one example from Matthew chapter 6. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned the disciples not to tell anyone he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples, you must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things. That is the wrong scripture. Let me find a Bible here. Is there a Bible in the front pew there somewhere, friends? Because I did not bring one up with me. Yes. Thank you. Now, either I gave Debbie the wrong scripture or I wrote down the wrong chapter and verse because I think I know the Bible so well. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21 sounds like this, friends. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Basically, Jesus is saying we have two things we can do. We can store up things for ourselves here as we are wont to do. Or we can be thinking about how we can be serving God instead, giving to others instead. Not accumulating things for ourselves, but trying to make the world a better place for others. And he says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What you do with the things that you've been given shows where your heart is. Do you spend the things on the money on, and everything for things for yourself, or do you do it to try to help others? Jesus says this even harsher in Luke 12. It's Luke 12, 15 through 21. Let me see if it's out there. Yes, this is correct. Luke 12, 15 through 21. Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. 
A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I'll store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. So even in Bible times, like storage units, right? They're building bigger places. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. That's really harsh language for Jesus to use. You don't usually hear him talk like that. But he's trying to really get people to think about how we think about storing up things for ourselves when we could be thinking about others and living our lives for God. And he's trying to say, really, it's an either-or way of thinking about it in life, but we certainly don't think about it that way, right? We think about, well, we can have great things for ourselves and wonderful things for ourselves and just do what we can on the side to help other people. But Jesus is saying we're going to do one thing as a priority in our life, though. We're either going to be putting others first and God first or ourselves first. One of those things is going to be that priority. Now, don't misunderstand. I know you have things at home with sentimental value. I have a box of things from our wedding. We have a tub in our basement for each child filled with special awards or projects from school over the years. You probably still have your old high school yearbooks, maybe, or things like that, and special pictures or things that are sentimental in value. I totally understand that. We all have those things. But that is not most of the things in our homes. That's just some of the things. Most of the things in our homes aren't things of sentimental value. And I don't just mean your furniture or things you're sitting on and actually use. I mean the things that take up space. And they make our lives more cluttered and more complicated and more stressed. Gentlemen, I know men with six hammers and four drills and three ratchet sets. And that's the top shelf of their tool bench. And no one is sentimentally attached to hammer number six. It's the same as hammer number five. I'd like to see our guys donate so many tools that we have the tool room filled again as we did last year. And what's the fourth drill for, really, you know? Just in case something happens to drill number three. And ladies, I know women with so many pairs of shoes they can't possibly wear them all. There's no reason the shoe department of the church garage sale can't be doubled in size. I don't mean to sound sexist. I know I'm using sexist sexist examples there, but I'm talking about tools and shoes. But you know in reality it's something different for all of us. Who knows what it is in your home for you personally that you store away, that you squirrel away. But all of us in some way have an inner squirrel. We're gathering up stuff. We're storing these things because we just might need them someday. And the way to beat that attitude is to take a hard look around our homes and decide not just what it is that is junk, but what other people might really be able to use that we don't really need or could do without. Because the things that other people need can help their lives. And the money we raise can help the mission of our church. So yes, This is kind of a hard pitch for the garage sale. It's a month away. You'll be hearing announcements each week asking you to sign up in some way to help this Saturday or day as we set everything up. But mostly, it's not so much about the garage sale I'm trying to say. Yes, the garage sale's coming. But I'm using the opportunity of the garage sale coming to have you think about this. There are things in our lives that we need to surrender and give up that we need to give to God. It's not just the things in our house, it's things in our lives too. We need to simplify our lives, make them less complicated, less stressful, and have time for God and serving God in our lives. But yes, one of those things is possessions. Because like it says in the Lord of the Rings, we don't actually possess things. They possess us. Really, God created everything. God owns everything. We are just stewards. We are temporary owners entrusted with these things for a little while. And when we can't part with things that we don't really need, if we can't give them up, then like the ring of power, we don't possess them. They possess us. If we can't give these things up, 
They have power over us. They possess us. And the only way to really stop that from happening, like the ring of power, is to willingly surrender them. Jim Newsy was a church member here who moved to Texas a few years ago. And Jim was fond of saying, I've never seen a hearse on its way to the cemetery with a U-Haul behind it. The Bible says that also. Look at these verses from Timothy. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we could take nothing out of it. There's not going to be a hearse behind you. I'm not going to be a U-Haul behind your hearse as you're off to the cemetery. We came into the world with nothing. We're going to leave with nothing. So in the meantime, we're just trying to gather all the things that we can for ourselves. And that's exactly the opposite of how Christ tells us to live. In the end, all we need is Christ. If we have Christ when this life is over, we have everything. If we have Christ while we live this life, we have everything. All the things we accumulate in this world that draw our attention away from Christ is the distraction of that great truth that if we have Christ, we have everything. Now, I'm not saying become a monk. I'm not saying become someone who gives up nearly all the earthly possessions. All you need is a few sackcloths, you know, and live like a monk. I'm not trying to say that at all. But God says, Jesus says over and over again in the New Testament, basically people make one thing their priority, accumulating things for themselves or living their lives for God and trying to be a blessing to others. All the stuff that we have crowds that out, crowds that truth out. One thing is a priority in our life. What's that one thing going to be? Now, don't become a monk, but simplify your life by getting rid of things that can actually be a blessing to others. And simplify your life by putting serving God, making serving God a priority in your life. The book I referenced in the beginning of this sermon is called The Lord of the Rings. The Lord. God is the Lord of all, the Lord of everything. The book says there's one ring to rule them all. There's one Lord of everything. And the book really asks this question. Who or what is Lord over our lives? This book asks, to whom do we surrender ourselves? Who do we make our Lord? Is it the things of this world? Do we surrender ourselves to our possessions and everything in this world so they actually possess us? Or do we willingly surrender ourselves to the Lord of all creation and the world that is to come that is eternal. The Bible is another book that asks that same exact question. Who or what truly is the Lord of our life? Who or what do we really give our hearts to? The Bible tells us that if all we have is Christ, we have everything we need. We're going to talk about that more next week, but for today, Clay found a song to help us think about this. It's a new song for us. It's called, If All I Had Was Christ. Known a love alive. 
like this before. book the lord of the rings it's an adventure thing it's a fantasy adventure it's like a science fiction kind of thing if you've never heard of it it's a christian story it really is it's full of all kinds of christian symbolism written by a well-known christian who's trying to get us to ask the question of ourselves who or what is the lord of our life it's the same question that the bible asks who or what is lord of our life what do we make lord of our lives yeah, the garage sale is coming up, so I'm thinking about all the things that we have in our home that we can try to get rid of and try to make things simpler and less stressful and try to help others in need. But it's not just that. It's all the things that we do in life when we need people to help serve at the garage sale or help teach Sunday school or do things at church to be involved in. And our lives are so full, like our homes are so full. Our lives are so full of so many things that we do that we can't really serve God either, you know, because we've got so much else going on. We have to think about what really is the priority in our life? What really is Lord of our life? Or who really is Lord of our life? What do we give our time to? What do we spend our money on? What do we do with these things? What it really is the priority of our life? Who is Lord of our life? And that song says, like the Bible says, if we have Jesus, we have everything. If we had nothing else but Jesus, when this life is over, we have eternal life. We have everything. Let's live our lives as if having Jesus is having everything and trying to serve God and serve Jesus and spread his love and really trying to make it a priority in our lives, the way that we live. Because one day, this life will end. There's not gonna be a hearse that has a U-Haul behind it of all the things that we're taking on to the next life. Instead, our kids are gonna clean everything up after us that we leave behind, you know that? And our lives that are so full of everything else, you know? We can thin that stuff out and make serving God a priority in our lives. What really is our priority? What really is Lord of our lives? May it be Jesus Christ, because if we have Jesus Christ, we have everything. As you leave this place and make Jesus Lord of your life, may the blessings of God the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord and Savior, and the peace and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now, remain with you forevermore. Amen. My life is in his hands. He is my confidence. He keeps his promises forever.